Hello everyone, and welcome to my Coronation Street official. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. 1. Has DD discovered Joel's link to Lauren? DD moves closer to the awful truth about fiancé Joel next week as she pieces together the evidence of his secret link to Lauren. Suspicions rose to the surface this past week when DD learned that a 300-pound purchase from a jeweler's Joel made in December wasn't in fact for a charm bracelet for his daughter Maeve as he had said. Joel had already lied about the purchase once after DD came upon the receipt. He initially said it was for cufflinks, but when the existence of his daughter was uncovered by DD, he revised his narrative to claim he had bought her a souvenir. Joel's ex-wife Emily verified this to be a deception as she met with DD this week, also noting that he was still paying for his former flat, leaving DD keen to find out the truth. Viewers know that the purchase was actually Lauren's iconic necklace, bought for her by her rich boyfriend at the time, and which promised to be a significant piece of evidence in her disappearance if it had ever been traced down. Joel had been in possession of the necklace since his vicious attack on Lauren, however he momentarily lost it when Hope spotted it under the seat whilst cleaning his car. Although Roy was able to supply solicitor DD with an accurate design of the necklace he remembered seeing, as he suffered in prison on suspicion of hurting Lauren himself, nothing appeared to come of it. Next week, DD searches online for the jeweler she remembers being named on the receipt, and narrows down their catalog to products valued at exactly 300 pounds. DD is stunned by what she finds. When she subsequently visits Lauren and Frankie at the hospital, Lauren lets slip that she's planning to start a new life in Belfast as soon as Frankie is healthy enough. Dee Dee conceals her horror as the warning bells sound once again. Only this week Dee Dee had learned that Joel had been planned to take a flight to Belfast recently, with him saying that it had been a work issue that had eventually been cancelled. Dee Dee plays it casual and brings up the matter with Joel, pointing out the similarity, but he gives nothing away. It's a strange one for Dee Dee because she almost didn't want to let her mind go as far as that, as it will confirm her worst fears, Shanique Sterling Brown admits. At the same time, because of the type of person Dee Dee is, she just needs to know the truth and there's a real battle going on inside her mind. Determined to get to the bottom of things once and for all, Dee Dee resolves to follow Joel, but what will she learn, and will she decide to confront her fiancé? I think she almost needs complete concrete evidence for herself to confront him, Shanique continues. Joel is a great liar and manipulator so at this point, Dee Dee is very aware that he's got an answer for everything, they are both lawyers after all. Even though things are falling into place and she's seen this little flash of his true character, she knows she needs to be careful, but not as careful as she probably should be when she learns the extent of who he really is. 2. David lets slip about Toya and Nick elsewhere, Toya and Nick have so far managed to keep their affair under wraps, despite threats from cult leader Rowan to divulge all if Nick doesn't invest in the Institute's new resource center. Nick and Toya's increasing estrangement from Leanne, Jane Danson, as she's fallen under Rowan's spell, has pulled the two together in terrible times as Toya confronts treatment for ovarian cancer. Nick has however confided in brother David, Jack P. Shepard, about his problem, and when David makes some not-too-subtle comments as the duo visit the Platt household this week, Toya is shocked to find that David knows everything. Nick apologizes and swears to keep his distance from now on, but later in the week he once again has to be there to support Toya as she heads for another checkup at the hospital. Will it be the news she is hoping for? 3. Alina is attacked. Inside number 9, the presence of Alina in Weatherfield continues to wreak turmoil for the Dobbs family, since the discovery that Tyrone has a two-year-old kid that he never knew about. Alina agrees to bring Doran over to spend some time with Tyrone, and while Ruby is delighted to get to meet her half-brother, Hope makes it obvious that she wants nothing to do with him. Meanwhile, Alina has started to get strange phone calls, and believes that it could an intimidation technique from the people traffickers she has come back to Weatherfield to give evidence on in an impending trial. Tyrone has another opinion though, questioning whether Hope might be taking her anger against Alina to a whole new level. Hope fiercely disputes Tyrone's allegation, and he also manages to get Fizz, Jenny McAlpine, offside when he says that he lied about a huge amount of cash that just left their account, he had in fact spent it on a meeting with Solicitor Adam about Doran. When Tyrone says that he would like Alina and their son to move back to Weatherfield permanently so that he can be a part of his son's life, Fizz is frightened, fearful that her husband's past passion with Alina will revive. Later in the week, Alina is preparing for her court appearance when she brings Doran over again and thinks that she is being observed. 
it seems her instincts were true when she's then met by an intimidating man at the door of her hotel room, who she had earlier observed lurking in the hotel bar. The man forces his way inside and threatens Alina against giving evidence. Will Alina be okay? 4. Kit comes under suspicion. Down at Weatherfield Police Station, Lisa, Vicky Myers, has further questions concerning Lauren's case as she invites Sarah, Tina O'Brien, back into the interview room for further interrogation. Nathan Curtis, Christopher Harper, is currently in prison on suspicion of the attack after strands of Lauren's hair were found in the back of his van. Although Sarah had pondered planting it there herself, in order to take Nathan off the streets and away from prior victim Bethany, Lucy Fallon, she had been caught in the act by cop Kit, Jacob Roberts. Kit persuaded her to bring over Lauren's hair, found on a bauble in the Platt house, but then proceeded to plant the evidence himself once Sarah had left, resulting in Nathan's imprisonment. Lisa again questions Sarah about the hair but all she can do is repeat what she's already claimed and deny having been in the back of Nathan's van. Spooked by the visit, Sarah begs Daniel, Rob Mallard, to get Bethany to try to renounce her vengeance against Nathan. Doing so may in turn take the heat off oneself. Despite Nathan's past, something is troubling Daniel about the whole case, and he later confides in Daisy that he doesn't trust Kit. Kit is already in Daisy's bad books, when her boyfriend Ryan, Ryan Prescott, elected to spend his evening off getting to know the new rover's lodger rather than spend time with her. Whilst Ryan looks to be getting on with Kit like a house on fire, would Daisy be taking Daniel's worries on board and keeping an extra close check on this potential new bromance? 5. Beth Hides the Truth Elsewhere, Beth is still seeking employment after her anticipated new career went up in a cloud of smoke. Beth had been using the Underworld machines after hours to stitch labels onto counterfeit t-shirts, but when boss Carla, Allison King, found out, Beth elected to furiously quit on the spot rather than let Carla talk down to her. It didn't take long for son Craig, Colson Smith, to uncover the true circumstances of her leaving, when he and Kit spotted her passing over the counterfeit items to her contact Sid, who wasn't best pleased when the fuzz revealed their appearance. Kit and Craig turned a blind eye, but it wasn't enough for Sid's contacts to take Beth onto the payroll as intended. Instead, Kit managed to solidify his future as a corrupt cop further by telling Sid that he wanted in on the transaction himself, whilst Craig was ashamed at the fact his mom had embarrassed him in front of Kit. As Beth walks out for another job interview next week, both Kirk, Andy Wyman, and Fizz remain confused as to why she jacked in her perfectly good job at the factory. Later in the week, Kirk can tell that things are tight between Beth and Craig as he pleads with Craig to give his mom another chance. Craig goes on to encourage his mom to tell Kirk the truth as to why she has suddenly found herself unemployed, but will Beth be able to bring herself to admit it? 6. Amy has a change of heart. Also next week, having previously had a lucky escape by electing not to invest in the Institute, Amy, El Mulvaney, looks destined to be hoodwinked by Rowan all over again. Rowan has made it his mission to get his hands on Amy's £40,000 inheritance, so was dismayed by her decision to not invest in the new resource center. Rowan reminds Amy that it's not too late to alter her mind, and after a particularly difficult day at the restaurant, it seems as though she might be about to do exactly that. Fed up of continuously being left to manage the house on her own, Amy finally snaps and informs Nick that she quits, adding that she should have listened to Rowan all along about taking charge of her life. When Amy tells Rowan about the latest breakthrough, he is overjoyed and promptly plans an upload session to bring her back into the fold. 7. Is Tracy satisfied with Tommy? Plus, having made a surprising return to Weatherfield, is Tracy's, Kate Ford, new life in Spain with lover Tommy O, Matt Milburn, all it's talked up to be? Tracy has been at loggerheads with Cassie, Claire Sweeney, since her return to number one last week, where she was unimpressed to find Cassie working as Ken's, William Roach, carer. As Tracy talks about her lovely lifestyle in Spain, Cassie is quick to comment that it can't be that great if she's opted to return back to sunny old Weatherfield.